Hello, my name is Ken Snyder of Place Matters. And uh, Don and Mac have asked me to give a, a couple additional examples of breaking down barriers using technology to more effectively engage communities. This includes new tools that are used for community um, design and community um, decision making and making it easier for include all residents, especially those uh, who have been on the margins of society, uh, and giving them a better voice uh, in planning for the future of their communities. As is often the case with new technology, tools such as social media and mobile devices create new opportunities for, uh, to dramatically improve civic engagement. Of course, they can also be misused. But I'm going to focus on the more positive uses. Uh, computer mapping is, has long provided planners with powerful tools to envision, analyze, and display the potential consequences of community development decisions. Today, these tools are becoming increasingly accessible and interactive. In Massachusetts, on Cape Cod, and in Somerville, residents use low-cost touch tables to work directly with maps, gain quick access to information, brainstorm on strategies, and in Cape Cod, get immediate feedback on the impact of their choices on key indicators. In Denver, organizers of public meetings focusing on turnaround strategies for low-performing schools use language tools based on cloud technology to make it possible for the translators to work with multiple groups simultaneously, translating notes in real time. This enabled parents with limited English speaking skills to remain fully engaged in the conversations and participate in keypad polling exercises used to prioritize recommendations for moving forward. 3D visualization tools like these simulations of transit-oriented development in Kansas City and green technology retrofits in Europe have helped make planning concepts that can be quite technical, much more understandable to the layperson, and have brought planning innovations into community meeting halls and homes everywhere. These three examples show how the right tools in the right ways can lead to broader community engagement and more robust public support for the decisions that emerge. We are now going to travel across the globe to Nairobi, to the sprawling slum of, of Kabira. Up next is a powerful film about how a group of people used OpenStreetMap platform to create a free and open digital map to better understand the challenges and assets that are important to the community residents, making the invisible visible. I hope you enjoy the film. One of the largest informal settlements in Africa is in Kenya, in the city of Nairobi, called Kibera. It's a very dense, very intense place. Kibera is a slum that is comprising 13 villages. And in those 13 villages, we have 12 tribes. If you look at maps from any existing source, Kibera is invisible just a blank spot on the map. It's kind of a fully functioning uh, enclave, but it's simply not supposed to exist. It's seen as illegitimate. The Kibia residents themselves have no public school, have no public health facility. The issue of sanitation is a serious problem. We have hospitals in Kibera, but if you ask people in Kibera who live there, they don't know where those hospitals are. So. Who's actually guiding that place? How is that place going to move forward? When we first arrived in Kibera, we had no idea what the response would be. We thought a bit naively, we'll spend a month or two in Kibera, and at the end, we'd have a map and the community would celebrate. But people are sometimes skeptical of new projects, data collection. This is why we didn't do it ourselves. It was important for the people of Kibera to do the map themselves. I personally never knew that there's something like a GPS. We were mapping facilities that are important to the community. This included religious facilities, health facilities. They were all very enthusiastic to participate in the project. But still, we would get a little bit of questioning from the neighbors. Well, why are you making a map in Kibera? Are you trying to evict us? Are you giving this information to the government? Is this so that they can tear down my house? And we say, no, no, 
The idea is you would have access to this information yourselves so you can actually have a proper discussion about the future of Kibera. That changed their perspective. They mapped those 13 villages in about three weeks. Every person that walked around with a GPS created this skeleton of Kibera itself. <laughs> animated the work that they'd done. Everyone in the room was totally blown away. Now that such a map is there, it can hold officials accountable so that we can tell them, look, here is a population of about 200,000 people with no facilities completely. What are you doing about it? In the second phase of mapping, we went a little bit deeper. We mapped education facilities, water and sanitation facilities, health facilities. We had young girls that helped us map security. Okay, but you don't want to be walking at night? Okay. On the security map, we used tracing paper to say, okay, this place is dangerous, this place is not dangerous. Like blue should be the more safe. Red can be the less safe. We had discussions saying, can you identify where women get raped? It's not a safer place. It's not a On the map, they're called black spots. So can one person be the... It's shocking how matter-of-fact they are about it. Like, it really is just a reality they live with every day. After six months, you have seen one of the places that was mapped as being dangerous. Today, that place has a police post. We used to be uninformed. Now we have all the information about Kibera. We are now informed. When I saw the map for the first time, I was proud. This has not been done by other people, rather it has been done by me. Ken Snyder of Place Matters in Penn State uh, Public Broadcasting, uh, which supplied the film we just saw. Uh, I'll note that this film was uh, just one of the films that they've uh, showcased as part of their Geospatial Revolution series. I hope you can check it out on the web. Um, my name is Don Chen. I'm with the Metropolitan Opportunity Unit here at Ford. And uh, I want to thank all of you for a terrific morning. Now we're going to invite everyone to go up to lunch in the East River Room, which is on the 11th floor. Uh, Secretary of HUD, Sean Donovan, and UN Habitat uh, Director, Joan Close, are waiting for us upstairs. And with uh, journalist Jim Traub, uh, they will be exploring the types of global and international and, and local uh, national leadership uh, that we really need to achieve the just city. So express elevators are standing by. See you on the 11th floor. <laughs>